I love how a successful entrepreneur that we had on a different podcast described himself. His name is Steve Rosenberg, and he said that he was an overnight success story 15 years in the making. That feels pretty accurate. You know, we spend a lot of years just slugging it out, working uh, literally out of basements. I think this studio here today that we're in for the Omaha podcast, this is the first job I have ever had or job. It's the first place I've ever worked where I wasn't in a literal basement. Even the last, the first couple of years when we started this company, I was working in our basement of our house. And I say our house, I mean my wife's house because uh, yeah, it, it's her place. I have the basement, you've been at the basement, and we all know how hard it really is to simply uh, get out of the basement to uh, make that business a success or even just to stay in business, to keep the doors open. So how do you go from the basement of your house to competing with major competitors in your industry? Well, this is a question that every small business owner faces and the cold hard reality is that it is extremely difficult to do. We've all dreamt of becoming that, that big success story, right? The one in the million odds that were overcome, the impossible that was made possible, the underdog who became a millionaire. The very things, the very reasons we admire successful entrepreneurs who have done it. So in this episode, we're gonna keep it simple, providing practical methods for scaling up and reaching new heights in competition with our guest, Van Deeb. Van Deeb returns to the podcast and Van is a guy who took his company from literally the basement of his house to being sold for millions of dollars. I think he had over 300 agents at the time. It was one of the largest privately owned real estate agencies all from his basement. It came from his basement. So we're gonna to learn today how you can take your company to the next level using some of these same techniques. Today we're talking about how to scale your business. How do you take your business from literally the basement of your home to being one of the largest independent real estate companies in the Midwest and then selling it and then doing it all over again. Uh, we're gonna find out here today with our guest. Uh, he is our returning champion, Van Deeb, who uh, built his real estate company, uh, Deeb Realty, built it up to one of the largest in his market. And then, as I mentioned, took it to being one of the uh, the largest independent real estate uh, company in the Midwest, which is impressive. He ended up uh, selling it. It's grown tremendously since then too. Yes. So there was a lot of good people there mm. uh, when, when it was your company and they really took that and just, yeah. uh, uh, took it the, the rest of the way. It was just kind of, I mean, they, they've seen incredible success since then too. Um, in addition to all that, Van Deeb has a, he's a motivational speaker. Mm. He is the author of many books uh, on uh, how to sell, tips for running and operating your business, finding success, even a, a book about his dog Baxter, uh, <laughs> which yes, comes from the movie Anchorman, right? Yes. Uh, Yes. So, um, yeah. So, a van, a van deep com is his website. You can book him for speaking gigs. Mm -hmm. Listen to his podcast that he hosts, the Van Deep Podcast, and of course, the Journey, which is his new radio show, uh, which is on twice a week now, and that's due to popular demand, as they say. Yep. And so. we're going to have a great guy named Matt Tompkins <laughs> on too. I'm excited to come on, and we'll be able to talk. Uh, it, it's, it's. I think it's interesting. You know, we we try to separate from work. Mm -hmm emotions mm -hmm. and personal, right? Mm -hmm. They say, you gotta check it at the door. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's accurate at all. I think emotional intelligence is a real thing. Mm -hmm. I think trying to block out emotions and you know, for me, I was trying to just block out some severe mental health stuff and mm -hmm. uh, struggles with addiction. And you know, fortunately I'm more than seven years into recovery now and in a, in a night and day different place. It's made you a better person. It, it has made yeah. me a better person. But the fact that we don't, you know, we know, you don't talk about that at the workplace. No. Most people don't. I always bring it up. I, I remember Damon Benning at the radio station, you'd always, when he walked by, he says, nope, I'm not asking. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, I, anytime I ask you, how you doing? You just jump into like too much information. <laughs> and he's like, I was, I'm just thinking small talk. And I'm like, well, you know, and he's like, I, he's like, I appreciate it. But I want to yeah. hear that from people because it helps me identify who they really are. And I trust people more when they're not afraid to talk about their vulnerabilities yeah. and what they've been through. It makes me engage with people like that more and it makes me trust them more because I know I'm talking to a real mm -hmm. authentic person. Everybody has a crucible that defines them. Yes. And in however way it goes, however 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 way it defines you, uh depends, but you know, that was mine. And yeah, you're right. Like I after that when I was doing uh I was doing a news talk radio show and I no way I could have done that 5 6 7 years earlier. I was just not 
I was not experienced as a human enough to be able to do that yep. three hours a day, five days a week. Yep. And so, so yeah, as, as hard as it was, it's a blessing. So I'm excited to come on and talk to you about that. Thank you. Um, today I'm excited to uh, hit on some, this is something every business owner, every entrepreneur aspires for, dreams of, is the business just taking off and scaling and you hear that term and some of these buzzwords like scaling and growth and KPIs and mm-hmm. it, you know they it can get overwhelming um, and you know we, we buy all these books and we listen to these people who have been there done that mm-hmm. it still can feel very overwhelming and so hopefully today what I'd like is you do a great job of uh, you know the kiss methodology of just keep it simple mm, stupid so important. and which you know knowing me yep. and how slow you know how slow I am and no. absorbing information but no. <laughs> um, let's simplify this for for business owners here in Omaha who want to see that type of growth so the first thing I want to ask you about is how do you get started uh, what is the first step because you and I both started literally in our basements with yes, both of our companies we did and tell me like what was the what was the beginning stages of of deep realty? What did that look like back then? And how did you get that ball rolling? So, you know, it started out in 1983. So 2023 will be my 40th year in real estate. Congratulations. Thank you. And in 1983, I started working for another company and I worked for another company for 10 years, which I really encourage entrepreneurs just like you did you work for another company and learn as much as you possibly can uh, before you start your own. I know so many entrepreneurs that just want to start out. They want to, you know, they they want to bypass being in the ditch. They just want to go straight to owning their own business. It's like the social media, you know, fifteen seconds of fame approach. Where no, yeah. no, 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 no. I just got to put it out there. As long as you know, I think it's good. I'm gonna be a millionaire yep. tomorrow. And people yep. think of that with social media. I'll yep. create my TikTok dance challenge and right. tomorrow I'll be signing endorsements for McDonald's. Yep, and, exactly. And then it doesn't happen and it's this real, real cold, rude awakening yep. when it doesn't happen and you you don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're gonna grow a company, you've gotta have people that believe in you and trust you and want to emulate you. Well, if you haven't been there and done that, why would somebody do that? So I started out selling real estate. I didn't know anything about it. I was a sponge, a sponge, a sponge. I had a car that wouldn't go more than 40 miles an hour. I had no money. I waited tables to feed myself. And so I- And did you have a daughter at this time too, right? Or that, I had a daughter maybe six years later. Okay, yeah. so it was still pretty early, pretty early on, right? I mean, still pretty early on, and I'm learning the ropes, and um, you know, I, I just wanted to be a sponge. I tried to learn as much as I can. So when I did open up my own company out of my basement in 1993, the risk factor was minimal because I've already been there and done that. I've watched brokers, I've watched real estate business owners. But one thing I went in my company, a mission is I wanted Deeb Realty, which they are continuing that at Nebraska Realty today, I wanted that company to be known for one major, major component. And that was this company knows how to treat people. And I want to tell you, the majority of the real estate companies out there, if the broker owner said jump, the real estate agent would say how high. It was quite the opposite of the model that I built. My model was built on, and it was very unique, and I know it may be common sense to you, Matt, but it wasn't to people in my industry. In my industry, here's the broker, here's the agent, here's the client. Well, the broker's trying to really impress the client. They're doing everything they can to attract the client, and they're telling the agent, this is what you have to do. This is our policy. At 1.13 in the afternoon, you're you're allowed to go to the bathroom. I mean, it was that kind of dictatorship. And I'm like, dude, real estate agents, are, keep your lights on. They're your boss. It's quite the opposite. So when I built my company, if an agent said jump, I said how high? So people knew, and my actually our motto that was on the door, a company built by agents for agents. So all of the little things, which you've talked about a lot in our you know, years of friendship, that it's the little things that mean the most. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you, Matt. And so I did the little things that the other companies did not do 
to make the agent feel like it's their company and all I am is support staff. So I had to prove that. I had a cubicle the same size as theirs. I could barely get my PC on it. You know, I was not the big cheese. I may have owned it, but I'm an equal person. And that's what I wanted to portray. I'm there to help you. And showing them that you're willing to do the same exact work that they're doing, and you've done it before, yeah. and so you, there's a level of respect there, I think. Uh, you know, when, when I look back at, uh, at your comment you just made there, and I look back at when we started out with my brother and I starting with the TV show, mm. editing out of my basement, the two of us crammed in a makeshift bedroom office, mm -hmm. editing all hours of the night, and, um, and we had uh, we would have to sneak into our dad's church. He was a pastor of a church in Bellevue. We would sneak into their basement banquet hall at like nine o'clock at night on Saturdays because nobody was up there. Mm -hmm. And we would use that for our well set up and film like guerrilla filming all <laughs> these comedy bits, and then go home and edit and put it together. And it was that way for the first three four years. And and you know I look back on it now, and it's it's it's. It's amazing that we pulled it off. It's a um, great show. I loved but, watching. But yeah, it's like that that was where we cut our teeth. And yeah. we cut our teeth there. We started with one camera, four lights. That was back when we were still using bulbs that blew fuses and everything. Yeah. And I look around now at what we have today. And even the last season of that show, we had twenty three people volunteering yeah. to just be a part of that show, writing and acting and stuff. And people so, say people still say today that you guys made a Heisman Trophy winner funny. We did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Uh, two of them actually. Yeah, yeah we had Johnny right. Rogers yeah, and Eric. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so getting started, you know, is it, but that time you put in, people mm -hmm. kind of they don't rec uh, acknowledge that they they see rags to riches. They think, okay, he was. I didn't know he was a millionaire yesterday. Now he yeah. is. Oh, it must have. He must have been the yeah. Mega Millions winner. And the reality is, there, there. You know, for us to have this the success we've had over the last couple of years, and the same thing with your company when you started it in '93, you had a decade, fifteen years of building up to that moment to where yep. you had built these relationships and mm -hmm. trust and you know you you'd been there done that so that that's a, a way i think to recommend to people to eliminate some of the risk mm -hmm. financially is you know start building up clients on the side that you know that's what we did was build up enough clients so we're now we're making as much as we're making with the full-time job mm -hmm. we can step back from that and then mm -hmm. keep building it doesn't have to be overnight and it usually isn't overnight no it, yeah. they you know it's kind of a funny cliche that i hear is you know, I was an overnight success. It only took 15 years, you know, because it's the truth. There's no such thing to me as an overnight success. Yeah. Um, it, there's a lot of work that goes involved in it, but you have to be willing to do the work. It's the four letter word, W-O-R-K. Mm. And, you know, with that, to me, if you're a hard worker, you're on a level playing field, you know, with the best of the best. We competed with a Warren Buffett owned company. And one of the coolest things that I'll ever remember is when groups of real estate professionals from this Warren Buffett-owned company would migrate to my company. And it just was a real excitement because they had a lot more to offer, technology-wise, luxury offices, mm -hmm. but what we had to offer We'd had the probably the culture, the, right? Yeah, the least attractive earlier. offices yeah. of any real estate company, the least attractive. People made fun of me because our desks, they called government issued. They were the old metal desks that nobody wanted, <laughs> yeah. so I got them for free. Um, but people came there. It was a real testimony of we're treated like we matter yeah. and our culture. Our culture is all about what's important to the real estate professional. It, it's a good exercise for any business owner to go to all their clients and ask them, why me? Yep. Why choose me? Or you've made this point to me uh, in past conversations of if you lose a client, asking why, why, why? why what did, did I happen? do what wrong? What did I do wrong? What You're do very important to me. Why aren't yeah. you doing business with me? You know, and, and I look at that, I did that uh, after like the first year of doing the, the two brothers just, you know, full time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was amazing to me, it was kind of eye-opening they said yeah we get it you have the cameras and the gear and i'm sure it's expensive and it's nice and none of that i mean yeah we assume you're gonna have that that's just mm -hmm. part of it so that's kind of like your desks it's like it was more about uh what we appreciate is your experience and you it's more about the people like you said 
you're buying the person, not the yeah. product. And I think we, we look at like, okay, we gotta have everything, has gotta be shiny, it's gotta cost this much, and we're comparing in this, you know, fear of missing out, you know, life that we're all pushing towards with social media. And, mm -hmm. you know, in reality, it's it's how do they make you feel? How are you treating people? Mm -hmm. and, and culture, so what, what did you do early on to create uh, that great uh, and effective company culture when you were starting from scratch? Like, how did you, how did you like kind of build the first initial few people to run with it? How did you get them to run? How did you decide what your culture was gonna be? You know, the blueprint was people first. The blueprint was if we treat the agents like they're our customer, we're gonna hit a home run. So I'm gonna give just a couple of quick examples of what separated our culture with our competition. And our culture, so for instance, when you sell a house, um, Usually the real estate agent's waiting 30, 45 days, 60 days, or if it's a new home, you might wait six months to get your commission. You're on straight commission. You're not getting a paycheck until it closes. And so they may wait that long for closing, and then the company would send the check through all this process and protocol, and the agent would get paid about five to 10 days later. That was not fair to me. I didn't, I didn't like that, so this is one thing that we did different. If somebody had a closing at 12 o'clock on Friday, they got paid at one o'clock. And we did that because we can. Every broker can if they wanted to, mm -hmm. but they chose not to. The so word got out. Man, you close, a deep, you close a deal and you're working at Deep Realty, you're gonna get paid immediately. Well, and the co-broker, the other person that brought the buyer or had the seller, they're getting paid quicker too. So our whole blueprint was what can we do to make sure that the people that work within the firm have the attitude of, I get to go to work, not I have to yeah. go to work. So my goal was to have all of our 350 people say, I get to go to work today. And it was up to us, the leadership, to make that happen. And and I, I've used this uh, terminology uh, for social media when people are trying to grow their brand through social media of creating super fans. And one super fan is equal to about 100 or 200 just mm. casual fans. Mm. They will promote it for you. And mm. so you, you, you know, I've always been a big believer in pay people well. Even, even for me, there's a lot of times where it was tough. Like even today, like, I don't take a big salary. I'm yep. just covering my, living yep. basic rent mortgage and that stuff uh, for now because I, I want to make sure the people that are working here are taken care of and they're yep. happy. And then, you know, rewarding people uh, with, you know, praise and, yep. and you know, constructive advice and, and also financially, you know, the, yep. all the different ways you can incentivize people. That to me builds such a great uh, kind of repertoire with people yep. that then if you get in a situation like we got in with, uh, with COVID yep. where everything's shut down, money is dried up and the, I think companies that were ran well, the employees said, we're part of this, we get it. You know, it's we're not anything you, you did. Yep. We can ride this out together. And, and there were companies that survived and then there were other ones that, that didn't, that fell apart. I so. think the key, the key is value added. We're always thinking about ways to add value to our customer experience. We need to think of ways to add value to the people we work with. And I'm a big fan of action, you know, um, don't tell me, show me. Don't tell me you love me, show me you love me. So well, I can't I, right now, Van. Like, oh, the well, we can talk about that later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, like, for instance, I want to give you an example. When I, I built another, I started another company two years after I sold Deep Realty, but this one is designed to keep super, super small, very small. And the agents I have now, of course, I get the, the check. The broker gets their commission check. What can I do to show value? I cut the check the second it comes in and I take it to their home. I drive it to their house and I leave it on their front door or, or I let them know I'm coming. Mm -hmm. That's value added. Little things too, like along those lines, and I can't take credit for this because my wife is really, she's hardcore into crafting. So yeah. she makes stationery and cards, but I've done that with you and other clients where just putting together a thank you card. Way cool. Which, you know, it's a homemade it means thing. Means a lot. And you don't you throw it away. You write a yeah. nice, uh, you know, sincere message in there. And, you know, we had a project, I think when we were working on something for you, where yeah. it was, there was just unforeseen circumstances that delayed it. And you did a lot a of value and added. And it's like, you know what? Like, and I was clear about it from the beginning. This is what's going on. But, 
you know, when you when you have that that culture, yeah. um, it, it between your your employees and yourself and with your your clients, your customers, yeah. there there's a lot of leeway, and they will they will ride it out with you because again, it's about believing in you. What what are some of the things like that people uh, when your your business starts growing, you're starting to become a decent sized company. You know, you've got fifty agents and maybe then a hundred agents. At what point did you hit? a inflection point before things got really big up to the point when you when you sold deep realty you had 350 agents yep. like so there what was it like was it 150 200 agents or employees to where you're like okay this it turned into a whole new level of super mario kart i gotta like really you know yeah i gotta get my practice time in yeah um actually um this may sound a little strange but i liked the company better when there was 10 people Really, I just yeah, it just got like the smaller. It got really big, and um, I'm v I was very grateful, but um, I liked the family style business when it was smaller, um, like I have right now with Big Omaha Realty, just a really small company. It's very manageable, and we're having a really good time. But um, you know, it's people, and you know, the I had such great humans that ran Deeb Realty. I, I was not the reason Deeb Realty was successful. Deeb Realty was successful because of guys like Andy Alloway, Christy Barrett, uh, Christy and Lisi. Done, and he's taken the, he's he's taken taken, the, the, the yeah. lead on that with uh, Yeah, he's Brass got one of the largest companies in, yeah. in the whole state it's now. It's incredible, yeah. And it's the same staff that I had. But, and, you know, we've got personal friends that work there. Um, you know, shout out to Angela uh, yeah. Starks, who works there, good yeah. friends with Wendy. Yeah. And they're just like the best people. They, they're the people I'll give you a shout out to Angela now. Starks, too. She's yes. a great gal. Yeah, she's she's fantastic. But she's the kind of person you're around and you just feel yeah. better yeah. after being and around. And they promote that. That's the and, culture. And that's what it's, but that's yeah. what you want to but, create. But, but, but there's a real estate company in Omaha. And I, people know me that I don't have a filter, but I'll be very careful today. You don't? Um, and But there's a real estate company in Omaha that has been around since 1857. I won't tell you the name. But they continually have the same amount of agents. They should have 3,000 agents. They, they just should. They've been around for 200 years. But they always have around 400 agents. You know why? Because they treat people poorly. Oh, their so. culture's not good. Turn around. If you go in there to one of their offices and the first thing you see is a frown on a receptionist, you know that the culture's yeah. something wrong. So it's it's a choice. Either the leadership is going to implement a great work environment, you treat everybody like they matter, or it's going to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. And we believe that you treat people like they matter. Now, it's not just people that worked at Deeb Realty. It was every agent out there, and they admired that. They admired that we're giving them the same respect um, that we do our that we did our own agents. I'm curious too uh, with with when things started scaling on the size and just pure volume mm -hmm. of that many people to manage and the revenue and all that. Um, how important was it to have systems like we we've talked a lot with some of our clients about and we're in the process of this of creating processes and procedures so that the quality doesn't suffer and it's you know you follow these steps and you can do execute this. Um, sale of this home just as good as agent C, D, E, um, so that you can increase that volume. Because otherwise, I've noticed it's it's hard when it's when it's all in the owner's head mm -hmm. and nobody else knows what we're supposed to do or how we get to that, the expectations or standards of quality. Um, you know, putting it down and writing, did you have a metamorphosis with that from where you started at home to? Yeah, so we managed by committee. I mean, I would come in to, to you know, committee meetings with our staff and I would have these ideas of what we should be doing da 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 and somebody maybe one of the admin people will say hey what if we did it this way and that way and I'd say that's a better way let's do it your way mm -hmm. I think you've got to listen to the people that have that um, are interested in growing the company and always be willing to change I would go into a situation which this is the way we're going to do it I'm where this is it and I'll leave there doing it completely different and you mentioned that a few times now it sounds like it's a recurring theme of having the right people having the right team especially your leadership yep. team um it, it starts there that's your foundation yep. your leadership team and and your core values knowing yep. what are your company's core values yep 
if you scale off of the off of that and you don't have those two things figured out or in place, yep. it's you've you've got a house of cards that could collapse at any moment. Yeah, it, well, I'm sorry. What, what are like the last uh, cause as we wrap up here? What are yeah. the last like few big uh, lessons learned or pieces of advice you can give um, to our our entrepreneur listening right now who hasn't is again just at the beginning um, ways they could maybe accelerate the process if they want um, missteps to avoid uh, pitfalls like what what's your kind of top three so takeaways? one of the things I would say is if you know you want to get in a certain industry and you want to own your own business go work in that industry don't own it go work there for a couple of years make sure that's what you want to do because it can be very costly if you just jump into an industry and you have no experience in it you just think that's what you want to do go work in the industry make sure that's what you want to do because working in that industry like when I worked for another real estate company I'm constantly thinking of things that I want to do different when I own my own and it makes you think gosh if they did this they'd be a better company well I'm gonna save all that for when I open mine up so one is don't jump right into it take your time it's not a race go work right go work for another firm before you start your own number two is use the 24-hour rule words are like swords when you're starting out it can be very frustrating and you can get upset you can be confused if you have a challenge instead of responding to that challenge immediately Give yourself a 24 hours. Andy Alloway, my general manager, now the owner of Nebraska Realty, he taught me that. And that it's really hard. It's really too. hard. It does. Therapists recommend that for relationships yeah. and marriages. Like, don't yeah. talk about it for 24 hours. If you wait, and Andy used to teach me that, wait 24 hours, and I want to taste them. It's amazing. You wait 24 hours, the next day, you, the, the response may be, no response it's like what were we mad about unbelievable but it's hard to do because i want to respond immediately so that's one thing that i would tell them and number three is be resourceful when i first got in real estate i knew i wanted to be the best i wanted to be number one so what did i do i called up i called up the number one agent when i was in texas and i called up the number one agent in texas she didn't know me from adam Hi, my name is Van Deeb. I've been admiring your success for a long time. Can I buy you lunch? And I went to have lunch with her. She didn't know me from Adam, but I used my resources, just like you do when you have a question, you call up people. Took her to lunch, and I left there after that lunch so high of emotion and excitement that I I couldn't talk because I I would have stuttered the whole time. I was so high because I left there going, and if we had cell phones back, then I probably would have called everybody. Hey, I just had lunch with Mary Harker and she's this. I left there feeling she's no different than me. She just worked hard, discipline, drive, desire, and determination to be the best. I have that. I can do it too. And the biggest turn on is three years later, I was above her um, for for volume and sales. But it did something to me. It did something to me knowing I'm with the number one agent and she eats like I do, she uses a fork, she talks like I do. What's different? Drive, desire, determination, and discipline. Yeah. And, I, and we all have the ability to, to, to really um, bring those four characteristics. Yeah, it, it works the same way with uh, health, physical health, trying to lose weight, where if you stick to it on a diet and you're good for two or three months, you see great results. Yeah. And then we just throw in the towel and we go back to old, you know, unhealthy habits and it all comes back and then some. And I want to invite your audience, you know, I want to invite your audience to, to, to look at Facebook and look <laughs> at Matt Tompkins with his shirt off. The guy is preaching the word. He looks darn good. But like people ask me that all the time. This <laughs> yesterday, was, so what are you doing? What is the secret? Are you, how You're often just do disciplined. you lift weights? I'm like, I lift weights once or twice a week. It's nothing, but it's disciplined with the nutrition. It's disciplined. Yeah. There are no cheat meals. And you just, don't put poison in your body. That's a big part of it. I try not to. I mean, yeah. every now and then, you know, it's Friday night, we're yeah. out for kicks, you know, yeah. and you want some, yeah. some rat poison. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, but it's the same. <laughs> it's, it's a minute by minute, day by day week by week month by month uh, process you have to fully commit and stick with it and being, that's being successful is not eight business results yeah being successful is not an eight to five it's 24 oh, no. yeah. 7 and got to constantly be thinking of ways to better yourself again you can find out more about van deeb at van 
time. You can hire them for your, uh, speak to your employees, get them motivated, get them inspired, excited. Uh, he talks about so many great uh, other inspirational stories he hasn't even shared here with us. There are a lot more and uh, I think it's a, you're a great resource for companies to bring in and, and talk to people about, hey, I've been there, here's how I did it, here's what I learned from my failures, uh, oftentimes more so than the successes, even the things you took away. So uh, you can also listen to his podcast, check out his radio show, The Journey, and um, uh, what, you got a newsletter you can sign. I mean, you're just like a one-stop shop, you're like I feel uh well you've helped me with some of that over yeah, over yeah. the years you've been a big I think big... I'm subscribed to everything yeah. so every every you know every so I have at I least did. one subscriber uh, yeah <laughs> but no I just want to reach people if you have something to say that's going to benefit others and help people get there quicker what are we waiting for we're supposed to help other people accomplish their goals and dreams too my new favorite line is we're doing this I love it we're doing this I love that you know maybe doing different things but we're still doing this together that motivates me yeah Van, thank you so much for coming on again. Appreciate it. I'm honored to be on your show. We'll talk to you soon, and I'll hit you up when we're ready to sell the house. You know, once this market gets not... Once I can actually afford to buy a new house to move into. Okay, I'm going to wait outside, so when you're ready, just come out and get me. Okay, I will. I'll be there. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here today on the podcast. You can find out more about Van Deeb and his success story in the show notes. Also in the show notes, one clicky click linky link away from additional resources and support from us. We love helping business owners like yourself for free. I know it's not a good business model. It's probably a, a dumb business model, but you know we do it because we truly love helping you just as others have helped us. So if you need help with anything from SEO to social media, uh, YouTube channel, anything, if you just have a general question or you need to be connected with the Nebraska Business Development Center or any of the guests we've had on the podcast, please reach out and contact me directly today. Again, in the show notes, everything you need, everything's in the show notes. You can't go wrong. Always visit the show notes. That's what I always tell everybody. This is the Omaha Podcast, where Omaha's most successful entrepreneurs help your business grow. 